Hi y'all, welcome back. I'm Gerald David. And I'm Kitty. This is Two Aprons. Today we're going to be cooking creamy risotto. Risotto, I like saying that word, it's very delicious. <laughs> it's very fancy. Let's go to our meal in a box that the man that pops up at the house randomly gives us. They used to say don't talk to strangers, but now I really appreciate the strangers that come to the house. Now we get all of our food from them. Uh, so we've got <laughs> some great tomatoes here. <laughs> And those had like a, what were they, a masson, what, chi, what kind of tomatoes were those? Those are grape tomatoes. Grape tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have two different peppers here. That's right. So we have a poblano. You can tell because it's bigger and kind of wrinkly. Um, and then we have a jalapeno. Is it wrinkly? Which wrinkly? is a little spicy. The jalapeno is not, but the poblano mm. is wrinkly. Uh, we have some Romano cheese here, nice and broken up. It looks like Parmesan, but it is Romano. It is Romano. According to yeah, what yeah, I've correct. received. Mm. We have our mascarpone, which is an Italian cream cheese that has been coagulated with an acidic substance such as vinegar or um, lemon juice. And mascarpone is uh, just an Italian cream cheese. I think I've said that. It's already. very delicious. Anyway. <laughs> it's one of my, oh my favorite gosh. things. It's like a sweeter, like cream cheese. That's like the, it's amazing. Um, this is carnaroli rice. Um, carnaroli. That's fun to say. Carnaroli. A lot of the time you'll see Arborio used in risotto, but Carnaroli is actually a little bit better. It has a longer grain and a higher starch content, and so that makes it keep its shape better. I like that. And of course. <gasps> the shallot. Shallot. And I have fun facts about shallots that I have actually looked up this time. If you watched our last episode, I made some conjectures about shallots, but I actually know this time, so I'll share those with you a little bit later. But this is a shallot. This one. Oh, and garlic. We have garlic and chives. Chives. Garlic and chives. Tiny chives. They're very nice. I'm very excited. And Lots of good color here. And this is fancy butter, y'all. This ain't normal buttery. This, this, not buttery. <laughs> this is fancy butter. What is right. what is the fancy? Oh, yeah. It's just butter. I didn't even yes. see yeah. that earlier when I looked at the recipe. But you know it's fancy because <laughs> it's round. That's how you know it's fancy. Um... <laughs> So we have to wash and dry the produce. You know, that's your common first step right there. Give me some of this stuff yeah, back. Yeah, absolutely. I washing. love that you're washing the chives. I don't know that I would have thought of that, honestly. Just They're wash just so it skinny off. and little. I feel like they'll get lost in the flood there. It's got to be delicate. You've got to be careful. Of the two of us, David is probably the one better uh, suited to delicate tasks. That's not necessarily my wheelhouse. <laughs> I'll do the tomatoes, I guess. Perfect. Thank you. You think we should do the shallots? No, like we peel the shallot. So. Uh, because the covering is coming off, there's no real need to wash it. I mean, unless you just want really clean garbage, which, hey, some of you may love that. Part of my OCD friends, absolutely, whatever your bag is. <laughs> uh oh, uh oh. Roll tomato. Oh. <laughs> We've mm. got runners. Mm. <laughs> hey. Mm. Not yummy. All right, what's next? All right, so first we are going to mm -hmm. peel and finely chop the shallot. Wow. So I'll move mm -hmm. some of this over a little so that you guys can. That will require see what a cutting utensil. Right behind you. Yeah. And as Kitty has demonstrated before, I learned this just the other day, probably with y'all. You kind of give it a little slice right down. And you'll always be careful if you're going to hold something and have a knife. Just be really careful. Um, shallot's probably fine. But that is how people end up avocadoing their hand or the knife slips and they like slice them. I've actually no, done it before. I guess that's but, true. Um, Not for amateurs. Don't try this at home, I guess. <laughs> Not saying don't do it. Just say attempt it carefully. Now, should I cut the ends and then peel it or peel it and then cut the ends? Do I usually cut the ends and then peel it. It's it's just preference. It oh, just okay. tends to peel easily that way. Like you've I can already see got that. It, I can know. see that. You get rid of the... Because it's no longer connected at the... Yeah. So it just kind of really Because of the like perforated little area... You just kind of came apart real easy. Yeah. Oh, it's delicious. Look and if all. you, you can kind of tell that the outer layer um, stayed on this. That's totally fine. It's mm -hmm. just like, um, it's actually a botanical type of onion. If we wanted to keep it, we could peel this. Yeah. So it's just like an onion that it has tons of layers. If you lose one, it's not a big deal. Um, but it is a type of botanical variety of onion. It's also closely related to garlic, leeks, and chives. Oh, you so said that the that other day that you thought it was might be a half garlic, <laughs> half onion. Yeah, I So thought, you were pretty much right. I heard that it was like a mix between garlic and onion. Um, mm. It's actually just like super related to garlic and a type of onion. So I wasn't too, too like far off. Like their cousins. Like their cousins. Right, like their country cousins. Country um, cousins. <laughs> I wasn't 
too far off, but it wasn't fully accurate either. And then so. do I roughly chop this? Yeah, you're just going to finely chop it, actually. Well, finely Yeah, chop. finely. So that is different. Finely chop. Not that I think it really matters in here. No, it, it probably does not. Like, probably as gives long it, as it's in pieces that are edible to you, you're good. Probably gives it a chance to uh, mix a little bit easier, the finer it is. Probably lets it dissolve a little bit easier. What do we end up mixing the shallots in with? The risotto? Um, Great question. Is it part of the taste? Because um, we'll bake the risotto and then we'll top it with these tomatoes. We're going to add that and the garlic. We're going to cook stirring frequently for one to two minutes. Then we're going to add the rice and some olive oil and cook again. And then we're going to add water and actually cook the rice. So this is pre cooked rice stuff. So yeah. You just want to make sure that it's going to blend in well with your rice. You're not getting like giant chunks of shallot mm -hmm. when you bite down. Unless you like that, and then by all means, like you do you. If um, onions, I'd be like, no, no, no. I love onions. And we love raw onions. Like, we're kind of freaks. Like, freaky, freaky. like if you all are old enough, remember that movie Lethal Weapon? You see an onion like an apple, you just bite right into it. We, okay, I've never done that personally, <laughs> and I have no desire to, but I will eat like raw onion on things. Like I've never done it because it's an awkward vegetable to try. It's like eating a tomato like an apple. Like, yeah, you just, it's mm, too messy. No just get a knife yeah. and fork. Maybe some salt, a little bit of nutritional yeast, make some it like things. a really delicious thing instead of just trying to like shock value of, oh. it's and, a tomato. And like an onion, you can feel your eyes water a little bit. What's the next? And I again, got? I think that's from the capsaicins. Mm -hmm. I want oh, to say. Oh, because we learned about those in one of our pepper units earlier. Um, so after we have finally chopped the shallot, we're going to peel and roughly chop two cloves of garlic. Perfect. Like, get him get that out of the way like a real chef. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. You love it. Cooking, like, it's so, like, hot to watch a guy cook. Like, I'm <laughs> sorry, but it, like, super is. I think it's probably I hot just it. to watch anybody cook for you. I think you're just like, yes, I don't have to cook. Maybe, but this I really awesome. like the nice skills aspect with guys. You know, like, I find it, like, really sexy to watch you chop vegetables and stuff. Not <laughs> necessarily the actual, like, stove or completion of the meal, but this part, like, it's super sexy. Ladies, you taking notes? This is how you trick your old man into cooking for you all the time. This right here. She'll teach you. <laughs> Except I'm being honest. It is really You can sexy. be honest and still be up to something. Oh. I never said you weren't honest. You know what I mean? I like that. That is true. You can definitely Yeah, you can be, be honest. honest. If, you, still if, have an agenda. if your agenda is pure, honesty is probably with you, but it does not mean you don't have an agenda. You sound like you're talking out of the movie your shirt is advertising. I know. If your agenda is pure. <laughs> then they give you a robot. I mean, if you gave me two robots, I could probably save the freaking galaxy. Where are my robots? Someone give me robots. I think people underestimate the power of those droids. Elon Without Musk, them, send us robots, please. Send us Let robots. this man show you what he can do with some robots. That's right. That's right. Short one and a tall one. Apparently, you need the both. You need the pair. What? Um, Wouldn't you want two tall ones and then one of them could like no, bend down man, to no. emulate a short one? I just feel like there's more use for that. And I've taken her to the symphony where they tricked her into seeing the movies. Whoa, whoa, I don't whoa, know how whoa, she doesn't whoa, know whoa, this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I've taken you to the symphony, to be fair. No, but I tricked you into going to see the Star you Wars. You did. That this was is, fair. This is how. I was like, we're going to the symphony. It's going to be so awesome. It was like one of his birthday or anniversary gets or both. We've gone to like three or four now. It's but awesome. it's the only way I can watch Star Wars movies. I'm sorry. Like, it's just not my thing. I like them as action movies. I don't follow all of the like different plot minutiae. But she knows the value of the droids. The tall one is there to be stupid and distract all of them because he's gold and everyone thinks he's valuable. And the little one gets the job done. Sneaky through. Hey yeah. But it is also super fun just to go like listen to the symphony play it while you watch the movie. It's a great experience. I totally Really recommend it. Um, we're in Tennessee. When they let you. <laughs> T-Pac does it. Um, hopefully it starts back up again soon. No, the Shimmerhorn does it, not T-Pac. No, I'm so sorry. You're right. We do go see it at the Shimmerhorn. Yeah. We go see a lot of things at T-Pac, but that is that? the Shimmerhorn Music Center, Symphony Center, um, that does those. They do Harry Potter. They do like a bunch of different cool stuff. So like, check it out. It's great. We love it. So we're getting the garlic Ooh. finely chopped. We or excuse me, roughly chopped. We've got our finely chopped shallots. So pretty. He did a really good job on that too. Um, then we're gonna have the tomatoes and season them with salt and pepper. All right. And if you want to move that stuff, I will get to have halving the tomatoes. Having to the happening. <laughs> My Bitcoin folks know what's up. To the happening. The happening. Uh, they're going rogue. No more rogue tomatoes for you. <laughs> Shabam. And I personally would like to use a smaller knife, but we already have two dirty ones, so I'm just going to use this one. Normally I would use like a smaller paring oh. knife. 
Um, you get the one you're comfortable with. Yeah, so typically I would use a, like, a knife like this to have great tomatoes. Um, and it's just a little bit more comfortable for me. Woo, that one needs to be sharpened. Actually, all of them kind of need to be sharpened. At this point, we've been using them a lot. Here, let me see that real quick. Yeah. It only takes two seconds to sharpen please, a knife. Please, because it's coming. We have this thingy. I don't know if you know what this is. I don't know what it is, but it works well. It looks like a guillotine for knives almost. I know it doesn't have like the down blade, but it still looks like some sort of medieval torture device for knives. Like works I expect really well. to see like, you know, tiny clamps for the handle or something at any moment. You want to show them what you're doing with that? I know well, a little like, bit, but it works over here. The reason I do it at the sink, because when you sharpen a knife, little filings come off. You do not want to do it around the food. You do it by a sink or some surface you can clean. Yeah, it's legitimately shaving metal off of there. So you have little uh, metal least, shavings coming off. Or at least that's what I'm making sure it doesn't do. I'm not going to say it's definitely doing that. I don't really know enough about the process, but I was told to keep it away from food to do this. But just want to show them the motion of how you, like oh, you yeah. don't have to actually do it. You just pull it through, and you that's put it. it. Between the two little black pieces, push down and pull it through. And that's hopefully going to give us a little bit sharper. And we're going to rinse it off and everything before we go back to the tomatoes. Because mm. I don't want to eat metal filings either. So. No, no, you know. Isn't that better? Like butter. It doesn't take much. If you have good knives, you run it through like ten times. And it's easy peasy. You can also do the whetstone. I know you're supposed to have three whetstones and do all that kind of stuff. Um, I just don't, no one's ever really shown me that. No, so, so if you know that how... Us well, up. I looked into it enough to know you need a certain stone set. It isn't just like you carry this one like stone <laughs> or whatever like you might see. If you're just carrying around rocks, don't hit us up. But <laughs> like if you actually have the stuff. Like uh, I have a kit that came with a little stone and it's all right. Um, but it's, I don't know. I like this guy better because it just seems to make it happen faster. It seems like I can go through a little bit. The other way is something you would do to like a serious blade, like a sword or like some type of bigger knife. These knives don't really hold up to just you doing the stone. Or maybe I'm not doing it right. Someone tell me in the comments. And then it's really important to have like a sharp knife when you're doing a soft like fruit like tomato, um, just to keep the integrity of it while you cut it. So that's why I was having issues earlier because I was having to push down so hard to get any sort of like cut going that it was, mm -hmm. you know, smashing the, the fruit more than I wanted it to. Oh, so, tomatoes is the key. That's how you know you have yeah. a good knife. If you can cut tomatoes, you're fine. If you can't, and you now, sharpen. like as soon as as Gerald David sharpened it, like it worked beautifully. So mm -hmm. thank you, babe. Yeah, I did that to this one earlier. I just forgot to do that one. Um, now I'm gonna thinly slice the uh, chives. Just chive on. Remember that, y'all. <laughs> don't see those bumper stickers that much. Keep calm and chive on. Mm -hmm. I never really understood what that was. That just it's one like, of those clubs. Isn't it like was, the onion thing, like the news just, thing or something? I don't know. It was never cool to be really a part of that. I was like, oh, what's going on? I always figure things out like a day late. So I'm like, ah, oh, man, I kind of to a point. It's like, I can't figure this out. See, that's why I have a kid. Because, like, she tells me what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. And through that, I'm able to, like, semi-keep up with, like, the jargon and all, you know, all this stuff. stuff. <laughs> but only, like, whatever she chooses to tell me. And sometimes she just sends me messages on Instagram and says, mm -hmm. like, do you know what any of this means? And then sees, like, how up I am on current slang. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> sometimes. Um, so now we're going to do the peppers. The peppers. And what we're going to do with these is uh, what we always do. So we are going to start with the poblano. We're going to discard the stem, the ribs, Why? and seeds. And we're going to medium dice it. You do one and I'll do one. Is it the same thing that happened to this? Um, I believe. No, I got you a knife. Yeah, but I wanted that one. The oh, well, give me the bigger. other one. Okay. <laughs> I tailor my knives to my vegetables. Doesn't make any sense, y'all. Just find a blade you're comfortable with. Am I also medium dicing this? Um, so what you're doing with that, uh, yeah, you're going to small dice it, not medium. Okay. But you're going to discard the ribs and seeds and, yeah. you know. I split in half like this, and then I'll adjust the seeds. And if somebody loses away. a finger, you guys will know why we have never cut on the cutting board at the same time before. So. No, that's not true. It'll be fine. I mean, it is true. You would know, but. It's not true. It's not true. Hopefully that's not how it'll go. Mm -hmm. Woo, this one has a lot of seeds. Look at that sucker. I'm gonna take this over here mm. and just over the trash can. It's super easy to like scrape out those seeds. Boom, boom, boom. You can hear them hit. <laughs> There's a lot of seeds. Oh, let's let the pepper. I kind of just do it right. Well, for the, maybe even for that reason. Um, but that is a good reason to do it on here so I don't accidentally drop what I don't want in the thing. 
I'm just washing the rest out because that got laborious. Mm -hmm. um, and these don't really have ribs to speak of in this poblano. Some peppers have really pronounced ribs. Like these? Um, like um, a jalapeno, yeah. That's a jalapeno rib. It's now been removed. Um, jalapeno. Whenever you're working with a... Yeah, the so edge. the poblano is a pretty mild pepper. Whenever you're working with a spicier pepper like a jalapeno, like a... Um, potentially a Carolina Reaper, you know, or a ghost pepper or something like that. As soon as you are done, um, just, you know, taking out the ribs, taking out the seeds, dicing it, you want to wash everything that touched it. You want to wash your hands, you want to wash the knife really carefully because if you touch that, don't wash your hands and go to touch your eye or something, like, yeah, it, it's going to be really bad. It'll light you up. It will, it will hurt a lot. So then we, uh, I small dice mine, is that what you You're going to small dice yours and I'm going to medium dice mine. Dice, medium dice. This is what we do. Chop, chop. Vegetables for you. Oh, I like that. <laughs> sometimes we rhyme and sometimes we sing. That's right. And that's okay. That makes for a happy kitchen. Helps me keep my sanity. Oh, that's adorable. I don't yeah. have mine anymore. <laughs> I know. I lost it along the way. Right. Traded it for marbles. And then I lost those the second time we played. Traded it for seeds. <laughs> they were supposed to grow magic beans. At least the seeds are something there. I love Grimm's Fairy Tales, you guys, but I oh, especially yeah. love them because they're like the original versions are super dark. Also, mm -hmm. I love anything that is like a kid story turned like super dark. Not like ghosts, but you know, dark. I like the fact that at Grimm's it wasn't turned dark. We turned it not dark. They began <laughs> dark. They were dark because they were lessons That's about right. safety. Don't for talk to strangers. Times. Don't go in that rando's house. Be careful about what guy you try to please. Don't cut your feet up. Don't cut. That's Cinderella right there, remember? I remember, yes. Yeah, trim your heel and trim your toe. But they it, were and gnarly. Then your foot will go. I think one of these books is the Tales of Grimm. Or the Brothers Grimm. Isn't that what it was? It was written by the Brothers Grimm? It, it, yes, and it's based on um, like the Black Forest in Germany. So that's the forest uh, that all of those stories take place in. it's super creepy. Super creepy. And there were morality tales. They were taught to teach children lessons to keep them safe. So Hansel yeah. and Gretel was like, hey, don't go with that old lady in the woods. It's creepy and weird and you should be alarmed. So stuff like that. Yeah, randos just don't sit up making candy and give it away for free now. <laughs> Yeah. Being like, that there's was, a reason no one else hangs out here. That yeah. was the original Don't Take Candy from Stranger story. Like, oh, yeah, it was. think about it. That just occurred to me. Like, I had never put that together before. Maybe yeah. you have. No, it straight up was. <laughs> Don't that get was in the van with <laughs> the newspapers over the window and the dude that says he has puppies. That dude ain't got no puppies, and if he even does, those so, puppies ain't worth it. Y'all, when my daughter was younger, um, she's 20 now, but when she was younger, her, fr her friends voted her most likely to get into a van with strangers. And they were like, here's Abby. Strangers and candy and puppies? Let me in! And I was like, that is not what a mother wants to hear. Like, that's poor. They told me this on the way to the mall one day when she was in, like, middle school. I was like, oh, dear Lord. She did not ever go with strangers. Though, so it all that's good. Out. That's good. <laughs> I love you, Abby. <laughs> What do we got next? So in a medium pot, we're going to heat two teaspoons of olive oil, which you know means a drizzle. Yep, a drizzle. Um, until on medium high until hot. So on, you know, what we usually do until hot. Then we're going to add the shallot, the garlic. We're going to season it with salt and pepper. Cook it for one to two minutes. After that oil heats up. Yeah, let this come. And then up. eventually so the rice is going to go in there. Three and a half cups of water. And we're going to cook Ooh, that. I will get out my little cup thing so I can measure what three and a half cups will be. The other thing is like you can buy so a good bit of water. You can buy all of this like that has all the different cup mm -hmm. measures. The other thing that Gerald David has that I really like is like kind of the universal cup measure. So it's one cup but on the outside it has notches mm -hmm. for all of the other measure for most of the other common measurements you'd need a fourth, a half, three fourths mm -hmm. and then over here it has a third and two thirds. And so I use that all the time just to minimize dishes. Because <laughs> I don't like doing them. So it's not horrible but like if I can avoid it why not be more efficient you know. That's true. That's true. Now um, once that gets to temperature. Yeah. What are we going to put in first? Is it the shallots? So once we get, it gets to temperature, mm. we're going to put in the shallots and garlic. We're mm. going to season that with salt and pepper. And like, we're going to go a little easy on the salt tonight because one of our last meals, everything was seasoned with salt and pepper after it. And like, it was a little salt forward. Well, I think I have a new uh, salt mill. 
And I think it might That's be true. water falling it on there a little bit. Our old one would get clogged because we use like Himalayan pink rock sea salt in our old one. We were or whatever, too bougie with our clogged. salt. We were going too bougie. <laughs> it would get clogged until like nothing came out. Well, this new salt mill does not have that problem. And we may have gone a little overboard because it, it was like it very forward. And that's, I'm not super great with that. For this, should it be bubbling or should it just be kind of viscous? Um, I don't, do you I don't think we want it bubbling at all. All right. Then I think it's about ready. Yeah, I think that's that good. Oh, oh, sorry. Do my... So, yeah, we're going to add the shallots and garlic. Mm -hmm. Oh, this looks so good. And poblanos. And all of them? Yeah, all the shallots and all the garlic. Poblanos are a little more mild, so, like, I wouldn't rub my eye directly after touching them, but, like, it's not as, like, yeah, not like important all that you or, go yeah. wash your hands immediately after touching them. Yeah, you don't have to be super... A jalapeno, like, seriously, please, please just do that. And if you don't, tell us in the comments below what happened. Yeah. <laughs> well, wait, no, that's, don't do that. That'll be some weird challenge that takes over the It's not, no, 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 no. It's not a challenge. Please don't. That's horrible. I've done it before. It's not fun. <laughs> yeah, it's bad enough when it's an accident. So what happens after that? What's the timer? So we're going to have to do that for one to two minutes. Or until slightly softened. Like so it. again, you can like always kind of determine. And when... Um, shallots, onions, that sort of thing get uh, softer. They get more transparent. So you can kind of tell without having to like test them or whatever. When they start getting more transparent, they're going to be softer. Oh, now you can really start to smell the garlic come to light. And you can hear them oh. kind of sizzling in that oil too. Like it sounds mm. delicious as well as smells delicious. Putting that good energy into my food. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is tasty. Oh, I'm getting hungry now. As soon as the smells start coming, I get hungry. <laughs> oh. But I'm pretty much always hungry, so I don't know if that's super accurate. Mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to turn this heat down just a little bit because I don't want to over. Yeah, he had it up pretty high from where we normally start just to get that oil up to temperature. So it's totally fine now that we can hear it go. like starting to cook and sizzle. It's fine to turn that a little bit. I down. wonder too, because uh -huh. at what point... We have the recipe up here as well as on my phone, so we're looking at it too. We do. So together. what I'm looking at is, so after this is up, then we're going to do the um, olive oil and the rice. Yes. So that's one to two minutes. Well, then we do the three and a half yeah. cups of water until I don't it's think boiling. We actually need more oil, but yeah, rice and water. Well, I'm just telling you what the instructions say, yep. not the... And then the rice, the water, yeah. Um, And then, okay, okay, I'm tracking here, I'm tracking here. So this dish um, is a risotto. I have made, uh, risotto is one of my favorite foods. Okay, oh, yeah, so I should have started off with that. But like so I, good. again, I love anything cream based. I love anything in a cream sauce. Like obviously rice mixed with cream over a period of time cooked to absorb it. So like form this creamy, amazing thing. Yeah, like one of my favorite mm. things. Um, I have made it before. Um, the way that I've done it previously, oh, oh timer. And then, well, it's the rice, is that correct? And the... I'm just yeah, verifying, because yeah, yeah. I have no short-term memory. Um, yes, so add the rice. I think there's plenty of oil in there, but if you want, yes. need to add a little more, you can. And that's and the, then what's the timer going to be? On the rolly rice, it's going to be one to two minutes again, so it's set for two, so we'll go ahead and start that. Um, but when I've cooked risotto before, it has been a longer process of letting the rice cook. And the, like this, and then slowly adding liquid until it absorbs, and then slowly adding more liquid until it absorbs, and in that way over a long period of time, making it creamy. Um, and I always use the fat-free creamer, um, not like the flavored ones or whatever, but you know, just the fat-free half and half. I always use that instead of the regular, and it turns out great, just because it's a lot of whipping cream if you're using a cream recipe, and I'm just not down. Um, I thought you liked all things cream. That does, that's a contradiction. I also, flip a flop in. I also like try to wash my we calories love you and wait. So. We love you I do love mascarpone. Like don't even play. And you don't have to eat the whole serving too. So you don't. don't but so don't feel thing like is, you gotta all step all over this, my parade just this, to have your special uh, day. You're not, nobody's adding cream to yours. This but recipe is a little bit of a shortcut. Is where I was going with that before ah. David felt the need to like point out uh, that I'm a little bit, you know. <laughs> No, no, I'm, okay, no, I just heard I the cream, and I was like, wait a minute, I thought you love cream. <laughs> I do love cream, but I also like to, you know, fit into my clothes. So. That's true, that's true. <laughs> I don't want to have to 
to buy a new wardrobe. So chair. typically, you would have a lot of other steps you would do for the. So the typically, order. it would just take a lot longer. Um, this is kind of a shortcut recipe in that you use the mascarpone, so it's not a liquid cream. Obviously, it's a cream cheese that has a little more, bit more thickness. It's going to make it creamy without actually having to absorb. Um, so in this one, you put the mascarpone and the uh, Romano cheese in at the end, just kind of mix it in, and that's where your creaminess is going to come from. Whereas uh, with a traditional risotto, you're going to add a lot of liquid and let it absorb over time to bring that creaminess. And typically, it's going to be like either cream, chicken, vegetable, or beef stock, you know, um, something that's also going to add flavor to the rice. Oh, mm. Boom. so now it's the three and a half cups water. And then what else? Yes. Um, three and a half cups of water, and then we're gonna heat it to boiling on high. Okay. See, so there's enough in this. And this is a vegetarian recipe tonight, guys. Um, obviously, like we didn't pull out a protein, but just to you know assure you, this is a vegetarian recipe, so there's no protein going into this. So the rice is the main body of the dish. Like we're gonna heat some of this stuff up, but. This is pretty much it. When I guess you mean like animal protein. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, yes, animal protein. Um, I guess the cheese and the mascarpone would have a little bit of protein, but. The mascarpone. Mascarpone. And it's mascarpone. It's mascarpone. an Italian mascarpone. Ooh. Okay, I didn't know that. It's an Italian cream cheese. Oh, okay. um, what part of Italy do you think that comes from? <laughs> I'm not entirely sure, but I do know that if you want to find it at your local grocery store, I've had the most success with finding it in the fancy cheese section. Uh, if I do like the fancy cheese section, In the I fancy do. cheese section at like the deli, you know, near the deli counter or whatever, you might, depending on how crazy your grocery store is, be able to find it near the cream cheese. Um, but if it's not one of those two places, they probably don't carry it. However, I made a tiramisu for my mom. Yeah. I loved mommy for Mother's Day. Um, and I could not find mascarpone in the grocery helped. store. He did, he was, he actually saved it. I had a small breakdown. He pulled me back from the ledge and, and the like, tiramisu was You can was do great. it! <laughs> it was. Um, and so a substitute for mascarpone, if you just can't find it and like you really need it, is eight ounces of cream cheese whipped with a fourth cup of What's whipping cream. What's the timer on this one? Should be. The timer on that, well, we're gonna heat it to boiling on high. All right, and then, and then the once it goes on, once it's boiling, oh, we're gonna boiling. cook stirring frequently for 16 to 18 minutes. That makes sense. Until most of the liquid has been absorbed and the rice is all done take. That makes sense. But yeah, so we um, we successfully used the eight ounces of cream cheese to one fourth cup whipping cream substitution. Um, and we used it on like a vast scale because I think I used like two, maybe two and a half tubs of cream cheese. Um, and it worked out great. So if you really can't find it, you've got cream cheese, you've got whipping cream, you're still good to go. And we're also gonna throw in a little bit of salt and pepper. Mainly uh, pepper. Yeah, mainly pepper. Mm -hmm. Oh, did we wanna add some of the citron salt? Cause I know we were gonna add um, a little bit of lemon tonight just to zest it Ooh. up a little. Yeah, let's do the lemon, not the citron salt. Let's do the lemon. We you wanna add actual lemon? lemon? Oh, yeah. okay. Cause we have that, I forgot. I forgot we have the lemon. Yeah, I haven't tested the citron salt yet, so I don't want to. I don't want, I don't want to experiment with that on this. So Daryl David was at the store the other day, and he found these like super fancy like flaked salts. Um, and I bougie using, salts. They are bougie salts. They're very bougie, and I love them. I've been using the wild garlic one uh, when I make avocado toast this week, and it's fantastic. So I thought we might use the citron salt, but we're gonna opt for fresh lemon juice instead. Yes, I think that will be. And these are huge lemons. I think, like, at <laughs> most, half of one is fine. Um, and we'll probably wait till it's absorbed, the liquid is absorbed a little more. I don't know. You could probably put a quarter of one in there now. And that you would just put it in there? Yep. Just we, squeeze um, it in with the liquid, I guess. Squeeze it in or put the whole drop it in? No, I would squeeze the juice in. Okay, yeah, I was not understanding this. Oh, yeah, I would yeah. just squeeze the juice in. There we go. And then we can do some more when it's like more absorbed or whatever. And if this does something crazy and Ooh. weird, I will let you guys know because for all I know, it's going to like curdle something, even though there's no, no cream in there. No, it won't I do that. No, I don't do think so, that. but no. I'm just saying, I'll be honest with you guys. I'll be like, no, no, we're, just, we're having some fun. We'll figure it out together. Don't pre-condemn. And we're worrying about curdling stuff. I nothing curdling. Typically, like, I have, again, I told you guys before, I have this resource, this book that I use, it's fantastic, where you can look up 
flavor affinities and what flavors go with what and everything. And so I did look up risotto today. Oh, did um, you? Okay. Lemon goes with like all of these ingredients, you know. It does. It does. So this is not something that I'm just like, hey, what would citrus be like in that? Yeah, so like, no, guess. I actually <laughs> have a resource that's like, no, citrus will go well with this. No, I bet it's going to be really well. <laughs> and I love it. Especially de-seeding the lemon here as I go. Especially having it be part of the um, evaporation process as it boils and everything it really will seep that flavor in there as it absorbs and hopefully it will kind of release a little bit of that lemon smell as well like if you have a garbage hole disposal we don't so i won't actually do this but if you have one you just throw this down there grind it up and it smells great and stop buying those like little lemon drop things like this is way cheaper seriously and it smells so much better because i used to use the lemon drop things mm -hmm. and dave gerald david came over and was like what are you doing? You know lemon peel works better. And I used it and I was like, oh my gosh, so much more so effective. <laughs> and it's just more use for your trash. It's like make the scraps work for you rather than go buy another right. thing. Use what you have. I have found that oftentimes I do have what I need. Um, even if I'm acting like I don't. <laughs> Usually I really look around and I'm like, ah, it's here. Resourceful. Okay. Necessity is the mother of invention. Right, folks? It is, so, it is. This is coming up to boiling, so it we're going to go ahead and set that timer. It's between 16 and 18 minutes, so we're going right. to set it for 17. And then we're at 17 minutes, we're going to check and see how well our liquid has absorbed, because that's our goal, um, is for that. Oh, and at that time, we'll add the, um, so I guess by then, most of the water will reduce and be pretty much gone. It'll be absorbed, yeah. And it will have us add the mascarpone butter and half of the Romano. Just half of the Romano. Though. And so again, that's like kind of how we're getting that creamy texture Romano. without having to add everything until it absorbs. Like over a long period of time is once that liquid has absorbed predominantly, yep. we're going to go ahead and add these creamy components while it's hot, stir them together, and it's going to become like super delicious. I'm very excited about this dish. And then we'll start on the tomatoes. What I'm trying to figure out is yeah. if it behooves us to start doing the tomatoes early. Or should we wait until like the last six minutes? It says once the risotto has cooked about 10 minutes. Like it literally uh, tells you when to put that stuff oh, in. It. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so we got about 10 minutes. In that case, I'm calling cooktails. Cook That's what I was trying to figure out. Yeah. to work that in there. I love it. Please do. Today, we're going to do, keeping with the lemon uh, theme, we're going to do Lynchburg lemonades. Get our delicious glasses. Yummy, yummy. Delivery system oh. for deliciousness. I'm just cutting these little lemon wedges to be garnished. And then these will actually go in the drinks as flavor. Perfect. And then this will probably go over the risotto once it's done if we would like more citrus added. Mm -hmm. So that'll probably be a garnish on the plates. Just half of that. What you'll need to do this, I'll just hand it off and let you explain, Kitty. All right. Kind of off camera. So for our Lynchburg lemonade, we have Jack Daniels. Lynchburg lemonade is actually uh, named for Lynchburg, Tennessee, which is where the Jack Daniels distillery is located. That's right. That's right. That's why I feel it's good to do that. Something about Tennessee. We have some very bougie sour mix um, that is an exquisite balance self-proclaimedly, of lemon juice, cane mm -hmm. sugar, and filtered water. They made sure to put that on the label. And I don't want to do too much of a commercial for these guys, but here's some triple sec. <laughs> this is triple Ooh. sec. Oh. You guys know it's like a sweet liqueur. I think it's orange. It's got pictures of oranges on the bottle. I'm going to say it's orangey. <laughs> and we're going to do like a guys and dolls version. Um, I'm going to do with sun drop. Vroom, vroom. <laughs> Um, yeah, I tried that earlier and it did not work for me. She's going to do uh, Luminata or whatever, that Luminati spe special beverage. I don't know what that is. That's, yes, I'm going to do the Illuminati. That's now very uh, conspiracy, very, uh, <laughs> very conspiracy, conspiracy theory. I don't know how to make that like a word that makes it sound like a drink. How do you cram the word conspiracy theories, or the words conspiracy theories, into a beverage? Conspiracy theory. Is this going to be a Lynchburg lemonade question mark? <laughs> um, yeah, right. So we're just going to pour this in one part. And again, one part one, is kind of one, two, one thousand, three. two, one thousand, three, one thousand. Dave's making these light because we already had one earlier just to <laughs> test the recipe. So we'd like to be able to see the sour is a part. and talk to you. So one part and I'm gonna do, sour. I did that a little bit less than a part. A little bit less than a part. So it's like instead of doing a three count, I did a one, two count. And again, this one, is two. all to your taste. So it like, is. you know, yeah. if you know you hate sour mix, like, dude, skip it. Like, oh yeah, or just do a splash. Or a little, yeah. Like, that's really a trick because a lot of times it's all about blending what's the dominant flavors. Got some triple sec in there. One, two, three. And then here's where we Boom. diverge paths. That's right. You could toss that for me, please, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Ooh, the sun drop. And now this is supposed to be four parts. This. Right. So you count to twelve or whatever. And 
and I added the whole thing because, like, honestly, this is a sparkling drink. <laughs> um, and I'm not sure how strong it is. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is all new. I'm figuring just, it out. I'm assuming it's not as strong as soda. You gave me the, uh, but I do really sour. like how that turned out. Oh, all right. Um, so now we're going to garnish these. Oh, yes, little. garnish. I'm going to stir the risotto a little bit just to make sure it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan ever. Because some of this in rice and stuff sometimes will. Give that a stir. Oh, mine is so pretty. Mm -hmm. like, I love that color. Oh, I want to get the, uh, the stir. We have Do you our... want to add fresh lemon juice or no? We have um, it if you want it. I'm going to try it first. I think that's a good call. So this is what Mountain Dew wishes it was. An alcoholic sun drop. <laughs> so David actually picked this cocktail to make for cooktails tonight. Um, we summer. kind of trade off. <laughs> And it's hot. So do you want to tell us what like inspired this choice? Oh, it's hot. So I wanted something cool and refreshing. And the last time I went to a barbecue at my friend Annie's house, or maybe it was a yard sale that also had barbecue. I'm not sure. One of you hipster fusion events. Um, they served these and they were quite refreshing on a hot, hot scorching day. And you said they had a really cool take on it too to make it like a frozen drink? They did. Theirs were different. They had where they took the, uh, the frozen lemonade concentrate. Cut that open, put it in a blender with some of this stuff. And it came out really good. Um, I don't have a blender, so this is what that looks like. Um, cheers. Cheers. To enduring the heat. Mm. Oh, that's good. Oh, wow. I nailed that. Try that All one. Right? And try this one, too, because it's different. Okay. All right. I actually like this better. Do you? Yeah, with that uh, weird limited thing. But this is still good. I think we nailed it. I'm glad we did a practice run earlier. I think we nailed that. Mm -hmm. And I also think we're now at about 10 minutes. Oh no, we got about a minute. We can wait a little bit. I am going to put the oil in the pan and start getting it to temperature. Oh yeah, that's a great idea. Absolutely. Just to make a little bit of progress. And I'm going back to olive oil. The can avocado. you guys guess how much olive oil is going in the pan? How much? I drizzle. Oh, so good. Um, and I know on the uh, last week's episode we did avocado oil, but we're back to olive oil. We were trying the avocado oil with the steaks on a tip, and... Ooh. And you weren't there for the tasting. It worked. It was very buttery, <laughs> very smooth. It was delicious. And avocado oil, I was looking at this earlier today just because, like, I've never used it before. So it's kind of like, I'm a reader. I love words. So I was, like, reading the bottle. Um, avocado oil is keto-friendly and Whole30 approved. I have a friend at work who does Whole30, like... Like every other month, I swear mm. she's doing Whole 30. I like her willpower is phenomenal. I'm so impressed with her. Um, but yeah, so if you're into that kind of stuff, um, maybe I don't know if olive oil is, but it's certainly not on the bottle, so it is for avocado oil. And I also thought it was funny that the avocado oil was something I can't remember. Oh, yeah, it's what is it? So it's the brand name is also funny to me too, seeing as oh, how it's keto oh. approved because it's, it has the word primal in it, which I just find really hilarious with the whole keto thing because it's all about proteins and like how people ate like in days past, or at least the origin point that I heard of it was. So um, tell me if I'm wrong, please, in the comments. I'm always happy to learn more about like different food options and different, you know, dietary choices. So once this is to temperature, and now we're well past 10 minutes, so we're good whenever this is. Once this is to temperature, we're gonna add the peppers and a little bit of salt and pepper. So all the peppers, pepper and pepper, pepper. Um, Cause yeah, it has us adding the- uh, The poblano. Poblano and the jalapeno. As much of jalapeno. the jalapeno as you'd like for as spicy as you'd like the dish to be. Again, if you know us at all, it's gonna be, that's right, all of it, okay. That's right, all of it. All of it, it's always all, all of it. All the good stuff. The, um, so is this our jalapeno going in the pan there? Um, or no? That's no, no. That was jalapeno, and this jalapeno, is, our, okay, and this is this the is our poblano. poblano. Yep, yep. I thought yeah. I had that right, but then you I did. I wasn't you sure. You did. See, oftentimes she does remember stuff. She just doubts whether or not she remembers stuff. That's valid. It's the self-doubting. Oh. Yeah, that is a thing. Oh, she's a badass. She don't even know it. She like a <laughs> sleep herself. Oh, drop the sponge. Drop the sponge. <laughs> going rogue. We were oh, watching the fifth wave earlier, so, you know, oh, sleep yourself, all ties in. Go it was a good movie. movie. It was really fun. I think we pretty much caught up on the cinema, and with uh, Rona going wild and everything that's going on, we don't imagine there's going to be too many good movies coming out soon, so we've been digging into the vault and finding good movies from the past with good actors. Here's the thing. Daryl David is a cameraman, right? 
Mm. These, they've shut down, like, all production. So, like, you can't have a staff of more than 10. You're not shooting a major motion picture, right? Yeah. So that's super stalling, like, the progress of movies coming out. So y'all get real comfy with your streaming and, services and DVDs and all that fun and stuff. And be ultra watching. generous. When it comes back, don't be as critical of movies as you were pre-corona. Know that these guys are making these motion pictures with skeleton crews, and they're doing everything a little bit less. So just go to a bunch of them. Be happy you're allowed to sit in a theater. You and want, do like, your thing, you know? Indie guerrilla films, you know? Like. Mm -hmm. Now, indie stuff is still rolling because indie crews can't afford nobody more than 10. <laughs> so, like, you can afford 11 people. You like, are at VHS anyway or whatever. I have two cousins, two interns, and one guy who just keeps following us. But, man, as long as he carries the boxes, we're fine. Um, <laughs> what was the show we were watching where he hired his stalker to be his assistant? Oh, the guy what his was schedule? that? It was like a Rob Schneider show or something. I think. Ooh, I think it was Rob Schneider. Yeah. Something with Rob Schneider. Like Rob Schneider, Schneider in Schneider. real life or something? I don't know. But even if that doesn't work out, even the assistant is like, you suck. Even if like, your stalker really oh, is a stalker. That's what it is, because he gets to know Rob Schneider, and he's like, oh, he was wrecking his car. He's like, oh, this is a really nice he car. It's my grandma's. <laughs> like, you know, Rob Schneider kicks it and, like, breaks something, and he's like, oh, it's fine. And the guy's like, I hate you. Like, I'm going back to being your stalker. Once the stalker gets to know him, it he's, didn't like, work out. no yeah. longer enamored of him. <laughs> so at this point, I've reduced the heat on the risotto to medium high. And why did you do that? Um, because if you keep it boiling, it's gonna start sticking to the bottom of your pot. Well, um, you're supposed to be stirring it frequently, but it is You are, but I'm high. following the instructions. This is oh, per okay. the instructions. Reduce your heat to medium high. Um, that wasn't on a whim. That you're really right. is. No, I no totally it is. That. It is, so I was just trying to blend that in there. No, good job. I kind of called it out a little bit because we kind of forgot that step. Um, it's totally gonna be fine. We can always add more oh, liquid. No, to no, no, no. It is whatever. fine. Nothing has gone wrong. No, that's that's what I'm saying. Like I was trying to keep this subtle. Now it's like a big thing, and yeah, we don't know what we're doing. It's very obvious. We don't know what we're doing. It's thanks for enduring subtle. with us. I just missed it. That's all. No, no. Thanks for enduring with us. This is getting really close to being ready. Yeah, a lot of the liquid mm. has absorbed. If you could see when um, Geraldine oh, yeah. had like tilted that. You still, it's still got a little bit though. It's still got um, some, but you can like make out the rice now. It's not like covered in a. Seat. Oh yeah, you can. You can. I'm not going to start these peppers, too. Did we set a timer for these peppers? We did not. To the peppers, we are going to add the tomatoes. Yummy, right behind you. And then what else? For two to three minutes. Um, that's really oh, good. Oh, just that by themselves? Yeah. Okay. So tomatoes are going in. And go ahead and salt and pepper those because another thing we missed was doing that initially. They were supposed to be marinating a little, and we the, didn't um, do that. Well, we kind of dodged a little bit of the salt, so I dodged that one that's, on purpose. That's very true, yeah. So, we again, we were reducing our salt tonight a little. And that's, yeah. Um, and so we didn't marinate them. We're adding salt and pepper now and kind of like cooking with it. Which apparently David planned and I missed. So. There we go. There we go. But that's okay. All right. I'm just here for color commentary. The risotto is looking good. That's starting to get creamy. No, that is looking really delicious. Mm. And they mean it. You gotta stay stirring this. If you BS, it will start to burn to the bottom of your pan. That, you gotta that stay liquid on that. is absorbing really quickly. Like even at medium high. It's so I'm even gonna really turn quickly. it down to medium. Yeah. Just to give it a little bit more. Um, I'm gonna put these tomatoes in. You set a timer for the tomatoes. I this? can definitely do that. It's um, two to three minutes. So I will go into my timer app because we only have the one. Yeah, you just said two minutes because I think it's already been on for a minute. And I like to get the tomatoes on there for a little bit longer than average, um, but I think three minutes will be an adequate amount of time. And the tomatoes are going. Mm, this is going good. I'm going to hold this off a little bit just to even help it cool down a little. Because you want it to absorb the rice, or the moisture, I mean, you want that to absorb into the rice, but you don't want it to burn the bottom of the pan. So it's a little bit of a... A little bit of balance act. And if mm. you needed to, you could add either more water or if you have like chicken mm -hmm. or vegetable stock on hand, you could add a little bit of that if you wanted to add some flavor. Again, if you're adding stock, you're adding a lot of uh, like kind of more concentrated salt, mm. so just be aware of that. If you're fine with that, cool, but just That's know true. Yep. that it's not water. Um, <laughs> so. Get that up. All right, cheers. Oh, I don't know yeah. if we've even done any cheers yet. Oh no, we did. We did. We did a cheers. This is a deja vu for the cheers I thought we did but didn't do. We're cheersing deja vu now. <laughs> cheers to deja vu. So the funny feeling. So what's gonna be next? I'm gonna stir these peppers. Um, basically, once the rice is done, we are going to add the mascarpone, the butter, and half the romano. Once the tomatoes are done in two to three minutes, we're gonna finish 
the risotto and we're gonna serve it topped with the cooked vegetables and then garnish with the sliced chives and remaining cheese. So we're almost done here, guys. Oh, and that is the tomato. And what timer. goes in this now? Cheese? Is that what you said? Half no, the cheese? No, 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 no. Turn off the heat, taste right. season with salt and pepper and we'll put, put it over the risotto once it's done right. cooking. Turning off the heat to that. Are All those right. like so to gotta... where you want them? Oh yeah. Okay. No, they absolutely are. Perfect. Um, maybe with a little bit more pepper. I'll hit with a little bit more pepper from our mill. And I just meant more like crispness and like. Oh no, yeah. Know. Okay. I mean, as far as like I know what you're talking about, they are where I like them. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I perfect. think you will enjoy these. They are ready to be eaten. If there's nothing else to be added, they are good to go. And they look really good from here. If you want to show, um, show them. But what I have to get back like. to this too, oh, so okay. I don't. Here. There's not a lot of time for this. We're doing a lot of stuff. So here's this. Boom, boom. Okay. And you can tell um, that those didn't get too mashed down or yeah. whatever. They retained their shape. They risotto takes a lot of attention, though. I don't mean to be it buttoned, does. but it does. And if you BS on this, you'll be screaming two stick. inches off the pan. Yeah, so. it's going to be bad. So we need to go ahead and just do this. This is ready. Are you done? Okay. Um, not plenty, though. We oh, still have to, this. We got to add the mozzarella. Yeah, no, it. yeah. She knows these steps, and it's, yeah, there we go. Yeah, it ain't ready yet. We're going to add the butter. There we go. Boom. And we're going to add half the cheese. And this is why it helps to have partners to remember. Like, no, this ain't what we're forgetting. Come on, we got all these other things to add. There we go. And then we're just going to stir that up. What's the timer for this guy going to uh, be? 159 seconds. Well, it's done. Like, once you stir all that in, it's done. Oh, there's not a timer for no. this? It doesn't say it when It doesn't go minutes. back on the heat, no. Oh, okay. In that case, I'll turn this heat it's down. Turn off the heat and then add that stuff. So. Okay. Oh, oh, this does work though. This is getting creamy. See how well partners work. I forget. Oh, it definitely we helps. Just, we remind it each helps. other. There's so many little steps, and I think a lot of that can be intimidating too when people are first starting out doing this. Oh, for sure. Um, that's why we check the recipes often because you do these a lot, and it's like, oh, maybe it's this or maybe it's that. It's like, don't doubt yourself. Just keep checking the recipes. Don't worry about locking it into memory. Just keep it close at hand. It's oh. also why we give each other grace. Because we used to fight a lot when we did this. That's true. And now, and we're we like, learn. oh yeah, okay. <laughs> and we learned. Like, you ain't no master chef. Come on, exactly. come on. Look at that creamy risotto. That, that is amazing. delicious. <laughs> don't touch it. What's no, going on there? No, there was a rice falling. So whatever's like, happening, yeah, let it happen. Don't touch it. Yeah, whatever's happening, let it happen. Let that rice fulfill his own destiny. Um, so no, what's next? Uh, we're plating. So we're no gonna... salt and pepper? I mean, I guess you I, I bet there's some salt and pepper. I definitely want some pepper. I mean, it always says that. I know it does. So, like, but it says it for a reason, though. Um, flavors matter. Because people use too much salt. Not really, though. There we go. This isn't the beat up on salt channel. Like, it's not. I, it's my personal preference. I'm not super big on salt forward dishes. And so we add a little bit, and you can always add more later. Right. You can always have um, it on the table, so if somebody is more salt forward, they can add their if own. If you add no salt, your food will taste not good. It will you be will more, get it will be more bland it will people it will complain salt. if you're like trying to date or something like that it's not going to go your way man um so know their metal conditions and um, buy that girl with salt now. yeah if, no, <laughs> if you're cooking for your grandma it's one thing if you're cooking for someone else it's something else um but you're going to want to put some salt stuff in there um so we're ready to plate this yeah we're plating oh yummy so pretty much we do all oh, plate over here yeah I already broke one. I'm gonna this guy off to the side. <laughs> oh, that looks delicious. Look at that. Mm. Oh my creamy, God. cheesy. So creamy. All right, yeah. hand me the other plate, please. Yeah. Whoa, Seriously, there we go. Oh, oh, I got this, thank you. Yeah. And I love how these tomatoes look just sitting on the green poblano and jalapeno peppers. Like, it's just mm -hmm. so pretty and inviting. Very, oh, it looks delicious peppers and the tomatoes and everything just mixed in. Add those right here. Oh, look at that. Great presentation. Delicious. And I tried some of these tomatoes. They are good. That's one thing. Tomatoes really, man, they will definitely kind of let you know right where they come from. You can taste a really good tomato. It stands out. The taste is just so much more vibrant and pronounced. Is that good for you, Kitty? Oh yeah, beautiful. Are you, I'm gonna go ahead and garnish. Yes, do that. So I'm gonna take these chives and just sprinkle a little more green over the top there. One of the interesting things I learned today is that chives and green onions are different primarily because chives are typically thinner and smaller. Oh, um, I didn't know that. Chives are typically used raw. And I thought chives were another word for green onion. They are not, and only the green portion of chives is used, whereas a lot of the times with green onions, you'll see, um, you know, separate the 
the white part of the stem. Oh yeah, you always, always use both. And you cook the stems. Um, so these are used raw, and oh my gosh, that just looks amazing with that cheese. We didn't use these for our drinks, so we're gonna go ahead and garnish those for anyone who might want them. Because we've got our little lemon tie in here with the, the drink and the jack and the citrus risotto. Very mm -hmm. exciting. Oh, it's gonna taste so good. As you know, we're a big clean as you go household. So Daryl David is just taking care of some of these pots and pans back here. Making a short work of them. It only takes a minute. And it's good too to let your meal set just for a second, especially with the steaks yesterday, or I mean last week. Boom. And the steaks turned out amazing. Like, I didn't have one because if you guys watch this frequently, you know, I sometimes eat chicken, but I'm mainly pescatarian. Um, so, like, but they looked phenomenal, smelled phenomenal. David's was perfectly cooked. Like, they were beautiful, so. They were. It was so delicious with the seasoning and everything. Oh, it was so, so good. And the gnocchi turned out really well. Um, oh, with the hot red pepper flakes? So good. Oh, yeah, yeah. The hot red pepper flakes made that. The crushed red pepper flakes, phenomenal. Oh, one other thing I wanted to clear up. So in one of our previous cocktail episodes, I said that neat drinks were drinks without ice. I found out I was wrong about that. Um, neat does mean without ice, but it also means without a mixer. So it's no ice or mixer. Um, so just wanted to clear that up. If you guys had may already have posted in the comments, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. um, very possible, but like that was my bad. Uh, I realized that later, so I wanted to clear that up for anybody who would happen to be watching that. That's hilarious. I don't think anyone noticed. Um, maybe one person might have said something. Maybe not, but I feel bad when I give incorrect information, and like so, I just wanted to make. Our sure community is really loving. They're really top notch. They don't burn us too hard. They are. Thank you I guys. Love and thank you for subscribing. Thank you for being like fans. It. Yes. Oh, so creamy risotto. Mmm. Looks delicious. Look at that. With a lemon twist, creamy risotto. Alright, you guys. Oh, just keep holding that up for a oh, minute. Yeah, sure. This is Two Aprons, episode six. Thank you for watching. Thanks for your support. We love you guys. I'm Gerald David. And I'm Kitty. Bye. <laughs>